See, here is one more beautiful problem on uh, friction. There are two blocks, A and B, which have been kept on a rough horizontal surface. A is on top of B. The mass of A is given to be 2 kg, that of B is 8 kg. The coefficient of friction between the block B and the floor is 0 0.5 and that between A and B is given to be 0 0.4. A force of 10 newtons is applied on B and you are supposed to find the force of friction between A and B. See just look at the beauty of this particular problem. You have applied a force only of 10 newtons on B. So I hope you all agree that unless B moves, you cannot expect A to move from its place. When B moves, then there are two possibilities. A can either move along with B and can have the same acceleration as that of B or it can move on B having a different acceleration altogether with respect to B. But I hope you certainly agree wholeheartedly that unless B moves, A cannot move from its place. And the reason for that is you have not applied any force on A. You have applied a force on B, whether B moves or not is a different issue. But unless B moves, you cannot expect A to move. Moreover, let me also clarify one more thing here. Had there been no friction between A and B, then B alone could have moved and A would have remained at its own place, falling simply vertically downwards, allowing B to move from its place. Right? So with that explanation, let us see whether we can make B move or not. So let us first consider A and B to be one single block of mass 10 kg on which we have applied a force of 10 newtons and see whether we can really make B move from its place. So I will just make a combined free body diagram here. This is the force of 10 newtons that we have applied on our system. The mass of which is 10 kg, so 100 newtons. This is the normal reaction of the ground on our system and because of the tendency of our system to move towards the right, the friction can be acting towards the left. This is the friction which comes into play between the rough surface, the horizontal floor you can say and the block B. Right? Unless I overcome the maximum value of the static friction between B and the ground with my force of 10 newtons, B will not move from its place. So what I will first do is, check what is the maximum value of the static friction between B and the ground. And for that the formula is mu into n. So F is equal to mu between B and the ground is 0.5 and normal reaction is 100 newtons. So that makes it 50 newtons. The maximum value of the static friction between B and the floor is 50 and you have applied a force of only 10 newtons. So you are unable to make B move from its place. And in that case, expecting A to move is totally ruled out. And if A cannot move, then the net force acting on A has to be zero. And therefore, the frictional force between A and B has to be zero. And therefore, the right answer here is D. Now this is another category of very, very important problems from Newton's laws of motion. Uh, this is based on collision and I hope you agree that collision is a very important aspect. Uh, you have got variety of collisions there to happen. One is a perfectly elastic collision when the kinetic energy of the colliding bodies before and after is going to be conserved and second is inelastic where this energy is not conserved. And another is perfectly inelastic wherein the bodies will stick together after the collision. So there are variety of uh, collisions which we are supposed to understand. Here is one which is based on collision. We will try to see if we can understand how to solve. Let me read the problem for you first. A shell of mass 20 kg at rest explodes into two fragments whose masses are in the ratio 2 is to 3. The smaller mass moves with a velocity of 6 meters per second. You have to find the kinetic energy of the larger fragment. That's the question. So what you can notice here is the shell was initially at rest. Here he writes it very clearly that it is at rest. Therefore, you can take the initial momentum of that shell to be zero. 
then it explodes into two masses one is smaller and the other is bigger he says that the ratio is 2 is to 3 the velocity of the smaller has been given you have to only find out the velocity of the bigger by conserving the momentum and then get the kinetic energy of the bigger mass right so we will conserve the momentum here before and after the collision in order to find out the velocity of the bigger mass what was the initial momentum initial momentum is 0 and how do we write the final momentum here its mass say m1 I am calling m1 to be the smaller mass and the velocity with which it moves is v1 we will substitute 6 meters per second later plus m2 v2 see though I write it very casually here what I have already assumed is the velocity with which m2 moves has got the same direction as the velocity with which m1 moves in fact it is an assumption because I am absolutely not aware as to in which direction does m2 move I am assuming that the velocity it has has got the same direction as m1 so if you substitute the value of m1 sorry v1 as 6 you get m1 into 6 plus m2 into v2 as the final momentum the principle of conservation of momentum says that these two should be equal so if you write it you get m1 into 6 plus m2 into v2 is equal to 0 and if you solve this you get v2 equal to minus 6 m1 divided by m2 now how do you interpret this minus sign as I told you in the very beginning it was just an assumption that I had made that the velocity v2 has got the direction same as 6 meters per second but looking to the answer wherein I have got a negative sign I can understand that m2 has moved the larger fragment has moved in a direction opposite to the direction in which the smaller mass has moved and with a velocity which is minus 6 times m1 by m2 now the ratio of m1 by m2 has been given to be 2 is to 3 so if you substitute that you get minus 6 into 2 by 3 which is nothing but minus 4 meters per second that was the velocity but he has not asked you the velocity of the larger fragment he wants you to write the kinetic energy and I hope you remember the formula for kinetic energy there it is simply half mv square and mass can be written as m2 and velocity is 4 meters per second so which makes it 16 see now if you get the value of m2 as I told you m1 plus m2 has been given to be 20 kg and you can get the value of m2 from there because the ratio of m1 is to m2 is also given to you so you can get the value of m2 as 12 kg if you substitute the value of m2 there you will get the answer and that would be half into 12 into 16 which is 96 joules and that makes the d option perfectly correct